Hi, welcome to Embedded Programming. So today we're going to look at using our PWM scale, which we learned in the previous few videos to control the speed of a motor. If you remember from the pulse modulation, we're delivering an average voltage over time. And so just like how that average voltage can be used to control the brightness of an LDD, if we control the motor, well then we can control the speed of the motor. So today we're gonna look at how to control a motor using the ESP8266 and a corresponding motor shield that was built for that microcontroller. Now the reason why we use a motor shield is because a motor have higher current draw than like an LED. So we need something that can take care of how to sync that type of current. And so a motor shield is a good way to do that. Now there's something called the age bridge design and that allows you to control the direction of a motor. Now I'm not gonna go over what an age bridge is. There's a number of videos out there. I'm going to put some link in the video description below. And these are some videos on YouTube that will not only explain positive modulation and how it works with for controlling motor speed, but it's also gonna show you the age bridge design. In addition, it's gonna show you some motor control board, which we will be covering. Now, talking about that, this is going to be a five part series on motor control. Now, why five parts? That's because I have at least five different motor control boards and I've been playing with some of them, not all of them, and I've seen something different among them. Some of them are easier to use, some work better than others, and I want to show you that. Now, your mileage might vary, and even in some of the videos, link that I put below, you're going to see some of those people using some of those same motor control board and it seemed to work well for them. For me, I was not that lucky. So I want to show it to you. Maybe you will be lucky. Maybe you'll have my experience. We don't know. But anyway, now when I say motor control shield or motor shield, I'm talking about a board that is specifically designed for one of these embedded boards that we have. See, if I say ESP8266 shield or a Node MCU shield, I mean something like this that can be connected to that board or mated with that board. If I simply say a motor control board, then, or a motor controller, I'm talking about a board that can be used without any specific microcontroller. All it expects is the digital inputs and that's it. Here are some boards that we're gonna look at and set up. So the first one here is going to the ESP8266 and it motor control shield. The second is going to be on this little robot um, platform that I have here. And you can see the wires hanging around. But basically, all you really need to focus on here is that I have an ESP8266 on a breadboard. But notice, coming out of that breadboard is just wires, just the signals that goes to this motor controller. This is not a shield because this motor controller can work to control any motor. And so long as you give it the digital signal, it doesn't care where it comes from, your finger, wherever, so long as it receives the signal, it's going to control that motor. The third one is going to be this motor control board here. And I really, really like this one. Um, and you're gonna see it has some really nice features. That too is also a motor controller. It is not a shield. It can work with anything so long as you give it the right signal. And we're gonna see that um, in part three. In part four, I'm going to use this Arduino board, which has a motor control shield. This is only one motor control shield for of many for Arduino boards. And I um, got this one a few years ago and we'll try and play with it. I've used it already, as you can see on this robot platform, I have stepper motors and I've used it to control that stepper motor successfully from Arduino code. But as you know by now, I'm really trying to use formatter for basically everything. So we're gonna try and get, see if we can use formatted to control that. The next board is an Arduino Wi-Fi board. Now this is a board that I got about two weeks ago. I haven't been able to set it up yet. Um, but the reason why I like this is because this is the first Arduino board I know of that is in the form factor of like the Mega and Uno with Wi-Fi built in. All the other Arduino boards, um, you have to buy a Wi-Fi shield or an ethernet shield and I did not want to have such a big setup with, you know, a shield just for Wi-Fi. So I wanted a board with Wi-Fi built in, just like the ESP8266. And this is, um, I think, the second revision of this board. And so I got this last week. 
And I also got the motor control board, the new motor control board revision three that comes with it. Again, this is an Arduino motor control shield revision three that I bought with this board. I'm excited about using this board also. Um, I think it's a really nice clean design. So we'll get to see that one in part five. Um, hopefully by then I'll get it all set up and going and so on. But again, I'm going to be using it with Formata. Okay, so that's enough talking. Let's look at the board design we're going to be using. Now, this is the motor design that we're going to use. I have the Node MCU on top of this image of the Node MCU uh, motor control shield. And as you can see, this board is very simple. And then you just have the headers so that the screw headers for you to be able to connect your motors and the power for the motors. If you're going to be powering this um, Node MCU separately from a separate power supply, um, then you would take, remove the jumpers or you can connect it between VM and VC here and NC, which is not connected. You can either put the jumper across these two pin, which is VM and NC not connected, or just remove it completely. But of course, if you do that, then you will have to supply power to your, um, your Node MCU either here or you can do the power supply for the microcontroller here. So that's if you have two separate power supply. Okay, with that said, this is our motor design or two motors. Let's jump into the code. So let's talk a little bit about the Node MCU motor shield before we jump into the code. So if you go to your favorite search engine and you search for a Node MCU motor shield, you're most likely gonna see um, some images like this come up. Now, this is a motor driver shield, but this is not for the Node MCU. This is for the Arduino, Uno, and those guys, Mega and so on. This is the one that we're going to be covering in part three. And here you can see the other drive uh, motor shield, which I mentioned, and this is the one we're going to cover in part five. This is the one that I got recently. But look at this guy. This is the one we're talking about. If you look, you can see it how it has the header for you to just simply stick the node MCU right into this board and then you're ready to go. So if we jump over to one of those links that you'll see there, um, you see a nice write up this article. I have a link to this in the code. I'll show you in a minute. And so you can see this motor control shield, this node MCU motor shield is based off of this L293D, which is this chip that's sitting right there that you cannot see it's hidden. And once you put the shield on here, the chip is going to be under it, so it's going to be hidden. And it's easy to um, align. It's, it's pretty straightforward how you have to insert the, um, the microcontroller because it shows you here which end is supposed to be here. All right, so once you have that inserted, it's going to look something like this. And these are the pins that are available to you. Now, let's go back up here. These are going to be, these two pins are going to be for motor A these two for motor B, these two for the voltage for the motor, and these two are the voltage for your MCU. Again, if you're going to be driving the MCU or powering the MCU from the voltage that you supply here for the motor, then you want to put the little, um, connect these two jump, um, put a jumper on these two pin. If you're going to supply separate voltage, either here or directly to the um, node MCU microcontroller, then you want to leave the jumper off or just put a jumper between these two. Okay. All right. So once you have that connected up that way, these are the pin from within your code that you need to use to control the motor. As you can see for motor A, the pulse width modulation pin is pin five, the GPIO pin five. And we went through this already when we talked about pulse width modulation on the node MCU, how we determine which pin to use. So this is literally pin five, you're going to put in your code. And that's going to be where you're going to um, issue some pulse width modulation to control motors A speed. When it comes to controlling motors A direction, whether it's going forward or backward, that's going to be pin zero. So changing the direction is simply toggling this pin from on and off. If you want a motor to stop, you simply set the speed to zero or pulse width modulation, zero pulse. Make sense? And the same thing here for motor B. Remember I hinted that the, the way you control direction for a motor is by using an edge bridge. And that's what 
um, is happening here when we toggle pin zero and pin two, we change the motor direction. Now I went over the pin connection already, and this is the Arduino code. We're not going to be doing working with Arduino code. So that's all we need is really this information and we are good to go. So let's jump into the code now. So if you look here, I'm in my embedded directory and I have a directory called um, for part five called formatted power suit modulation control because that's what we're going to be working on. And part one, we're going to be using the ESP8266 again. Sounds redundant by now. And let's start our editor. So once I start up my Visual Studio Code editor, let's open that up. Uh, I don't have anything. So let's start off with exercise one. So we create a directory, exercise one. And of course, we want a main.go file. Now, what I'm going to do is paste in some code that you've seen already. So if I paste this in and let's review it, this is nothing that you haven't seen before. It's very straightforward. So let's ignore the imports for now because these are all again straightforward. Formatter, GPIO, we've used the GPIO to talk to the LED. This is GoBat itself, and this is just a, a login package. And so again, you've seen this. This is my default connection to my ESP8266, which is over Wi-Fi. And so I have a byte for brightness because we know that when you control an LED, you can call this function called brightness and specify a byte. And so that's what I have here. Now, what do I do? Well, ignoring all this other stuff that you've seen before, we create a new connector to that board. So we have our new TCP adapter connecting to that port. And then I create a new LED driver on pin five. I'm going to be issuing some pulse width modulation um, signal through that pin. And so I have a LED, let's imagine an LED connected to it. Every 500 millisecond, which is half a second, I want to increase brightness by five. So remember brightness is going to start at zero. And the first time it comes through, is going to increase it by five. And then we set the brightness and on that. Um, so of course we write it out, but we set the brightness on the LED and then we just keep doing this forever. So the stuff below here is the stuff we always do, which is create a new robot with a name, the connections that we have for that robot and the devices that we want to use. And then of course our work function, which we just reviewed. Now I'm not going to run this because I do not have a LED connected to pin five, but I want to start with some code that you remember. So let's now start writing code to control the motor. So the first thing I want to do is um, make a note about this circuit that we're going to use. And remember the circuit is in our circuit directory for part five. Um, for So I have that at a much higher level. So it's just one directory up. Um, so look for that. This is the circuit we're going to be using. I show you a diagram of it already. And here we just want to learn how to control motor's A speed. That's what we want to play with. How are we going to control the speed? So one thing we can do is change this from brightness to speed. And so we can leave that there. And we're using pin five because remember from the what we saw in the documentation, it says that pin five is a speed. So maybe we should put that up here also. So let's let's stick that in. So we have our little note. So um, we create a some nice handy variable um, constants for that. And so instead of saying pin five here, we can just say motor A pulse width modulation pin. And the same thing. Okay. So I'll still use the LED driver and let's and instead of setting um, MA, we'll say set in speed, right? Or motor speed. Right. All right. So let's um, see if we can run this. Let's turn on our board. I have this jumper set right now to mean that I'll, I'll power my board with external power, but I'm going to move it over to the jumper that connects V motor with V in. And that means that I want to connect to power my microcontroller from this same power source. And notice all I'm using is this battery. Right there, you see everything we need for a little robot car, right? We have a microcontroller with a motor control board 
can control two motors and we have a separate power supply that's not coming from like a computer or anything. And if we can talk to this board and control those motors, all you have to do is imagine now that you've mounted this in one of those little robot um, platform that you see me have, or you could build your own or something like that. And there's your robot car. And all you have to worry now is the intelligence to control the board. And that's what we're trying to build up to. First thing first, let's see if we can get this motor torn in. So I need to go to my example one directory and I'll say go run main. And look at that, the number of speed is going up. And then you start hearing a song. The high pitch song is getting louder and louder. And then we should expect the motor, one of these motors should start turning pretty soon. It's getting higher and higher. And there we go. And we got the motor turning and it's getting faster and faster. And then it stopped. Again, when it got to 255, that's the fastest. And you can hear that song getting louder and louder. Um, at this, what it means is that the pulses are too low or the average voltage is so low that it's not enough to turn this motor. So we can see that so this motor start turning around 190 or something or there about, uh, about 200. So not a very right range for us to control this motor, but we are getting the turn. All right, good, celebration. Well, what I wanna do now is I'll stop this and it, you still hear that little buzzing song because the code is still running. I'm just not connecting to it. So I'll reset my board, okay? It's sitting there waiting. And so what I'd like to do is instead of using the LED driver, just a little bit misleading, remember we're using GPIO package. So if we do that and we type new, these are all the different types of drivers we have. We have a button driver, direct pin driver, and LED driver, a motor driver also here, which we're gonna get to eventually. So for now, I wanna go to the direct pin driver. So let's use the direct pin driver. And since we're using direct pin driver, we no longer have brightness, only LED have brightness. The direct pin driver have something else. And let's see what that is. So if we do that and we look at what's available, we have digital write. So we can write something that's high or low and read a value that's high or low. We can do on or off. So just simply turn the pin on or turn it off. But we have PWM write, and that is what we want. And PWM write also takes a byte. So just because we're doing the direct pin, we have PWN. When we're doing LED, we have brightness. So that's those are the only two things we change. Change from an LED to a direct pin driver and stop and we use the method PWM write instead of brightness. I think we should change this name from this to something more along the lines of what we're doing, which I think we should say that's how we're using. So let's call it MA speed GPIO. So we're using this pin. What we're creating here is for motor A speed using GPIO. All right. So nothing really changed, just renaming some stuff really. So we didn't break our code, so this should still work. We'll just rerun it just to make sure. Um, I can look here, I can see that all my code is saved automatically. We can hear the high pitch song coming up. And pretty soon when we reach 200, we should see that our, our motor should start spinning. I don't go, there you go, actually it starts spinning a little bit before 200. So you can say about 200. Okay, so let's stop this. And the high pitch song, I'll reset my board and get ready to go again. I call that success. We're able to successfully control the, the speed of that motor, it looks like. So let's say we copy all of this code and we make it exercise two. So in exercise two, I want to do something um, slightly different. Because we were just looping around, we got up to a certain speed and then we immediately came back down. I want to now speed up maintain the max speed, then go back down to the lowest speed. And so slow down and then back up again. So for that, I'll just call this um, ramp up and ramp down. So this is our objective for this section. So wanna ramp up and ramp down. And we're still gonna use the direct pin driver. So how are we going to accomplish ramping up and ramping down? We have this speed already. 
and what we need to do is increment and that's what we're doing here this five is our increment now what we can do is save this in a variable which was our increment motor a increment is equals to five for example and then we can just change this to motor a increment so that didn't really change anything and the way we can accomplish okay well now this is looking like an int and so therefore that's going to be a problem first incrementing and then casting it so how often should we increment so this is occurring every half a um, second that we're incrementing our value and there's nothing wrong with that um, we can calculate and say well if we increment we want to get to 255 for example is our maximum value we can divide by 5 and so if we have 255 divided by 5 that's 5 into 25 is 5 5 5 is 25 and so 1 and so it's 51 times that we're going to be calling um, this to increment which means it takes us 25 seconds to go from lowest value to maximum value that might seem like a long time and it actually doesn't seem like if that is how long it took so let's see um, let's run our code again so we'll clean up so this time we're in exercise 2 and so if we do go run main so here's an example of how we can tell how long it takes to get to our maximum value. If we run our code and we look at this output, we can see that this log statement is telling us how many seconds has passed or elapsed since we started logging. And so this is zero second, one second, blah, 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 blah. And as you can see, remember we said it's how we start um, and then we get to the maximum value of 255. 25 seconds later so that's consistent and correct with our calculation that it's about 51 iterations before we get to the maximum value and then we reset 25 seconds seemed like a long time to wait for this to ramp up so instead what i'll do is i'll say if i want things to occur in about 10 seconds what i can do is change this to about every 40 milliseconds so if we call our increment every 40 milliseconds, but instead of incrementing by five, we increment it by one instead, then I'll get to the maximum speed of 255 in about 10 seconds. Now, how did I calculate that? Well, I want to get to the maximum speed in 10 seconds. So then I asked myself, 10 seconds is really 10,000 milliseconds. And so we have a value of 255. So how much, how often do we need to increment? So if you didn't, you know, it's, you need to increment 255 times. So you divide 10,000 by 255 and you come up with like 40, 39 something. And that's how I have 40 milliseconds. So now if we run this, we should see that I can get to max speed in about 10 seconds. So let's run this again. Five seconds in, six seconds, seven seconds, eight seconds, nine seconds, 10 seconds. Okay. So around 20, I should get to max speed again. Right. And that's exactly what happened. And so if we scroll back, we'll see that at 20 seconds, I'm at maximum. And at 10 seconds here, I'm at maximum again. Okay, so it takes 10 seconds now to get to max speed. And like I said, what I want to be able to do is ramp up and ramp down. So what I will use is a counter. Now, why do I want a counter? Well, if I have a counter that's incrementing, then I can check and see when I have done 255 iterations. I know it's all 255 iteration is 10 seconds. And then I can use that to say, well, now I should stop counting or I should count up or I should count down. So every 255 iterations, I will just simply change my increment value, either to have it be one to increment up, zero to not change it, or minus one to bring it down. So what does that look like? 
So by resetting the counter, what I do is I only come in here if it's equal to 255. So at first counter is equal to zero, it gets increment, increment a number of times until it gets to 254, nothing happens. Then it gets to 255, it comes in here, reset counter, it checks and see that, oh, oh, on this set of iteration, when I got to 255, this was, it was one. So I should set it to zero, meaning don't increment. And I go back now and I start calling this a number of times with the increment set to zero, which means I do not change my speed. But remember, we're gonna be calling this every 40 milliseconds and 255 times later, which is 10 seconds, what do I do? I come back in here, reset my counter, check, and this time I should be zero. Well, if it's zero, which means I wasn't incrementing um, my, my speed or changing my speed, I should now start decreasing my speed. So my decrement is now minus one. And we leave this thing and we go back and do the same song and dance again. So now my speed is going to be going down, decrementing. Then after 255 seconds, 255 iteration of that or 10 seconds, because we're doing it every 40 milliseconds, then I want to go the other direction. So if this seemed a little bit confusing to you, maybe there's an easier way you can think of to write it. I'm just hacking together something to do this ramp up, maintain speed and then ramp down. So let's see if this works. So we get to the maximum speed, we hold in that maximum speed, again for 10 seconds, so at 20, we should see a toe, it should start coming back down. So here we are, and now we start coming back down. And there we go, we're decreasing our speed, decreasing our speed, and at this point, um, now that we know how the speed um, is essentially zero, and then now I start ramping back up, and at 40, I should be at max speed, so I should start turning anytime now. And there we go, I ramp up to max speed. I maintain for 10 seconds. So at 50 seconds, we should change and start going back down. And there we go, we start decreasing our speed. All right, so ramp up and ramp down, ramp up, maintain speed and ramp down is working. Let's move on. So I'll just kill it here, reset my board, and then let's continue. So exercise three. So now that we know how to ramp up and control the motor speed, why don't we try and see if we can control the direction also? To control the direction, remember all we need to do is be able to toggle this pin. This is not pulsive modulation pin. This is just a regular pin that we are able to raise high and lower and that should control our direction. And we need to do this to pin zero. So we already have that nice constant there. So let's create a, another GPIO that we're gonna use. Uh, there we go. For controlling our direction. So this is gonna be motor direction pin. Direction pin. There we go. And we'll call this, let's call it um, motor a direction GPIO. Now if you remember, once we have another device that we're using, we have to add it here. So this GPIO has device have to be added there and started. Okay, so we have that in our picture now. So when do we want to change direction or how do we change direction? Well, like I say, all we do is we toggle the pin. We need to change our direction after we've done a complete cycle. A complete cycle will be three times 255, okay? So what is three times 255? 765. So every 765, we need to change direction. So another way of doing that is to say, let's have another variable called direction counter, and we're gonna keep incrementing that. And if direction counter, right, is equals to 765, right it means that it's time for us to change direction and so we can have our direction counter again be reset to zero because we want to do that every time we reach this um, like sort of boundary condition or milestone and what we want to do is to so say motor a direction gpio should be toggled right now 
we can toggle an LED, but when we have direct control for a pin, we can't toggle it. There's nothing such as toggle. We can turn it off and on, and that's one of the things that we can do is we can check and see if it's on, then turn it off. If it's off, turn it on, that sort of thing, right? Um, because I like the idea of toggle, what I'm going to do is make this guy a LED. So instead of using a direct pin, I'll make this guy an LED. Uh, it doesn't mean that oh, I'm actually using an LED. It just means I like the how the driver uses that pin, which is to give us the ability to just say toggle. So um, now I'm missing a variable here for direction counter. All right. So again, hopefully this is pretty straightforward. So that's all there is to it. So let's go to example tree directory and run the code. And we're getting up there and we start going in one direction. We hope maintain for 10 seconds. Then we're going to start decreasing our speed. Nice. And we're stopped. And then we should have flipped direction. And so now when we start increasing, we should see this turn the opposite direction. And it is turning the opposite direction. And so we'll maintain that speed also for another four seconds. Then we're going to start decreasing our speed now. Slow down. And notice which direction is turning. And then we're going to turn the other direction once we ramp up back to about 200. And so, direction should be changing, and we should be turning the opposite direction, and there we go. So now we have demonstrated both speed and direction control. All right, sweet. So let's stop this, and I'll reset my board, and let's move on to example four. What could it possibly be? We already have speed and direction control. So you pretty much know everything you need to know now about controlling the speed of a motor and its direction. So what else can we do? Well, let's close these off. Well, okay, we probably should grab a copy of, oh, we have it already, so we don't need to actually grab a copy of it. So this is example four. And so in this example, what I'd like to do is before we're using the direct pin to control our speed and direction, and so what I'd like to use is the motor driver that comes with um, the GoBot package, right? And this is the motor driver. So to use motor driver, well, all we have to do is say that we want to use the motor driver. Now, how do I know that oh, I should pass the positive modulation pin or what parameters to pass? Well, if you just over over it, you'll see the motor driver takes a digital writer, which is our board, and then one parameter, a string, which is the speed pin, speed pin. Well, our speed pin is our pulse width modulation pin, so that's good. And how do we then, well, if the motor driver is taking care of the control in our motor, do we still need to control direction? Well, we could, but we don't have to. So what we can do is say that our, our motor, we're going to get back to this and rename this variable that. And if we look, we'll see we have things like back to specify how fast we should go backward. We have a backward pin. We have a connection. We have a current direction. We have a bunch of different things. But look at this direction pin. Direction pin is what we want to set. So that is not a parameter that you can pass to the motor driver when you create it, but you can set it afterward. It's just a struct value and it exposes this property and we can set it and this property is a string and so we can say motor a direction pin that's it now we should probably change this name from being um uh, gp motor speed gpio because that's not what it is anymore and we're just simply going to call this guy motor a and we no longer need to specify this device here because we're no longer controlling the direction directly. Now, when it comes to speed, well, we don't have pulse width modulation. We actually have a speed function. 
that we can pass a byte to. Same exact idea, if you, if you think about the brightness, PWM write, and now speed, these different drivers are simply reusing the underlying um, pulse width modulation to these things, expose and speed. Okay, so we have speed. In terms of changing the motor direction, there's no such thing as toggle. We can't toggle the, well, at least they don't have a toggle for the motor. And we can check that out and see which, um, or not direction, but rather motor A. Motor A that, and if we look, we can see, we can set backward speed. We don't want to do that. Um, backward pin, we, we, we don't want to set any more pins. Current speed, um, current direction. This seems like interesting. We can set the current, see the current direction, and then we can call this direction function. So if we look at current direction, we'll see that it's a string. And so we can say, let's say D is equals to the current direction. Now, I said just now that oh, we can set the motor direction with motor A that direction. Uh, come on, A that direction, All right? And we see that oh, that's a string value. So if you want to see exactly what set of values you can set, just hold your command or control key down and then click on this and you bring up the source. And you can see that you can use forward or backward. So there we go we want to be able to do forward or backward. So we can do a check. We can say if D is equals to forward, then we want to set D equals to backwards. That's all there is to changing our direction. And all we're doing now is using this motor driver instead of the direct pin driver. So this simplify things for us a little bit, I think. Well, let's see if it works the same way. So oh, we have to change to example four. And let's run. Maintaining our speed, we're decreasing our speed. Now we want to see if it's going to reverse because we're using this motor driver now to control our direction and decreasing and let's see now we're not turning yet oh what happened there hmm still look like it's going forward did it flip uh, let's see let's give it another round and see what happened so it slowed down Hmm, interesting. Let's see if this was working. Then it should have flipped to the other direction. Now we're speeding up and we should start going backwards now. Hmm, it's not turning. So let me give it a helping hand. Okay, so I think my battery is dying, but it is going backwards. All right, so it is working. Um, slowing down. And let's make sure it's going the other way. So it's come to a stop. And we want to see it reverse direction. And there we go. Um, the thing is, I think my battery is dying. And this is the other thing that I noticed with this. If putting this on a little robot and it actually carrying some weight and so on, how long it's going to actually run. So maybe using rechargeable battery or higher capacity battery might be the thing. Okay, so there we go. Um, forward and backwards with the model control driver. So again, you have everything you need to be able to control a motor. You know, you can use the direct pin GPIO. You can use a motor driver from the GPIO package. All right, so let's move on. Stop this, reset our board, and there we go. So we are controlling both motors independently. This guy should reverse. This one should start. And and I don't know why um, with a 9-volt battery and these batteries are fairly new. They're new batteries. I just pull them out of the pack. Why this motor is turning so slow? Why that guy is not turning faster? Okay. So at least though we demonstrate that all, and you can see the direction for this flip again. So this is going to start going this way pretty soon. And there we go. 
all right so at least in theory we have it working um i'll cut it off here this is video is already long but that's what i want to cover was this this motor control shield for the node mcu it's fairly easy to use with GoBots um, gpio motor um driver it's even easier and if it's not even too bad when you use the direct pin control but i'm not impressed with the board i really am not a um, couple of things that there's this button here for power and it doesn't do anything i mean you can see the the power light led on there for the motor and it doesn't stop them from running so for example if this guy is going uh let's see if i turn this off you see this button this button doesn't do anything in terms of controlling um, those things overall i'm not impressed at all because i could not drive a car like this the car will not move these it's just moving too slow and that's a brand new battery and so um that's the reason why i wanted to show you the test of all these drive these motor control boards and shields so that uh, you can see uh, do you want to try investing in it um are you having the same problem let me know in the comments what you think if you think i did something wrong let me know but I am using a nine volt battery and they're, I just pulled these, both of these out of the pack. And um, you know, still the, the motor is barely turning after help it and all this other stuff. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at controlling this guy, using this guy to, to um, thing. We're going to still use the Node MCU, but we're going to control it this way. Now we can, might even swap out the Node MCU to use an Arduino since this doesn't care. Uh, yeah, we could try both of those to see if it's different. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.